Welcome to part three of the Normandy vlog. Yes, this part of the vlog is where the Irish have been building roads. As kind of, uh, kind of as we've become known for. <laughs> <laughs> so, road layouts are now starting to be finalised. Yes, when so. we left you last, we were at that point where we are going to recolour and stuff like that. But we decided we would just go ahead and build the roads. Yes, this okay. is the stage of the terrain build we call the three R's. <laughs> three R's? Yeah, roads, rail and rivers. Yes. Roads. We've got the roads done. We're almost there on the rail. We're almost there on the roads. We're almost there on the rail. And we haven't even start. started the rivers We haven't yet. started the rivers yet. But. but what we have now is we have six tables, I believe, with road layout. Well, yeah. almost six tables. We've got about four of them. So the plan is that um, the uh, these six tables are rural Normandy. Have a look. So all the ones with the grass mats, that's kind of more little villages, hamlets, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then at the back of the room, we're going to do a larger, um, a larger town fighting through a town. Yep. Basically, I've been saving Private Ryan all over myself. You know, it's like. Well, we'll come back to the town thing when we get, get yes. moving on. Right. So, quick look at the layouts. Here's what we've got. We're going to show you in a sec. How we do how it. we do this. Yep. So what we have now is we have large sections of road, mm -hmm. which is cool. That means when we come to lay it all out, we don't have too many things to figure out. Correct. Plus, we're gonna, we don't yet have it, but we're going to put some little codes on so we know what the yeah. order all these little bits go in. And for the event itself, we're going to use a piece of gaffer tape to actually gaffer tape together um, or duct tape the, the, the road so as to stop this kind of movement larky malarkey yeah. same on the rail track so what we'll put is duct tape on the undersides of the rail track which will keep it all nice and solid together and then if we need to after, at the end of the boot camp we can just slice it off and so there we go we call that table a table a table b needs to be done we'll come back to that in a bit but come on over and we can have a look at table c yep we might as well quickly go through them each one of them is different yeah we try to get little straight bits but curvy bits and stuff and then Lots of these junctions because we feel the junctions is what adds a lot of flavor to yes. the tables. Yes, I agree. So that's A, B, C, so we can go up to... D would be where the Normandy ruined castle um, uh, is going to be. This is basically where Rollo made all his babies, Lloyd. So roughly so, like there's the a tower in the corner somewhere. Well, there's going to be road. a bunch of these Norman towers yeah. and a bunch of walls and it's all going to be very heavily kind of um, ruined. Cool. So it is um, real kind of. This is your kind of a, your your uh, '60s war movie kind of thing yeah. going on in my mind on this one. You so. stand there, and we'll go around here to show you the other tables. Mm -hmm. Coming this way. Yeah. So, so that's the E. Then e. we've got E. 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 Which, e. which brings in a rail track as yes. well. So we have a. We've got a bit of a station here that does have a lid, but we're using it as a proxy at another table. Yeah. Now, the thing with the rail track is what we try to do with the rail tracks um, here during boot camps is we try to have rail tracks sweep across multiple tables. This gives a little bit of joiny uppiness to the, the, to the different tables. So this track, if you spin round and catch the beautiful Justin, lines up with that track. Yep. Nope, your angle's off. Oh, <laughs> <shit. laughs> it's close enough. We don't do that with the roads because we want to, all the tables to have lots of interesting road layouts. Yeah, and then that over on that side, that track it's, it's cuts across two tables there. All right, right. so that brings us to A, B, C, yeah. but E, we, but we have, D. But we also have a branch line. Don't go away, man. Look, all right, we have a branch line. We got a branch line Sorry. for shunting stuff. I forgot the train oh, load. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have any carriages in put on this. Yeah. Oh. We need we need a train. Why are you printing buildings? We, yeah. could be we should be printing trains. fifteen mil trains. Is what we should be printing. <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. Now. You find me the train. I print you the train. Oh. This is how it works. Can okay. I just say, if anybody watching this works for Hornby, and you want to do a Hornby boot camp, Hornby boot camp. <laughs> give us a shout. Wouldn't that be amazing? That, that'd be cool. A Hornby boot camp <laughs> where you get to spend an entire weekend building train layouts with us. And uh, looking at all the latest technology of Hornby, especially if we can get that dude over who does all the sounds. They have one man in the Hornby Corporation, and he's Mr. Audio, and he spends months finding the perfect cow sound. It's actually a really cool job, though, because he gets to go on the train with the microphone yeah. and stuff the microphone in all the pits of the train, recording uh -huh. all its shunty noises. Here, he wouldn't need to be recording near me on a train. <laughs> anyway. 
Um, then, right, so let me see if I can actually get my alphabet right this time because I'm yeah. e eding all over the place. A, B, C, D, E, F. F. Rock and roll. F. Right, we're on F. Now you can see that F is basically just the big shapes that we had. Yes, so now we're going to show you how right. we do the F. So we've got a couple of square tiles in the middle because Warren's like big into town centers or something. Well, it's I don't know what you're village playing. squares. Yes. Village squares. Um, I, I, do they have them in Normandy? They do know. If they have them in the rural parts of Ireland, yeah. they have them in Normandy because the Normans did shit tons here in Ireland. So we are basically descendant of Rolo. Well, from <laughs> Norway. <laughs> R Roly. Roly. <laughs> uh, I if it's you on a Saturday night, it's got to be either the bonus after you've had a couple. Here, give, me, give me that. Give me that unpainted one over there. No, no. Either the boner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So when you no, come, if you've had enough, still bonus. Mm -hmm. When you come, put roads and things down, you don't want to do this, right? You don't want to just go straight in from the edge and make a straight road that matches up. It's far more interesting if you put sort of. Diagonals and things yeah. to the table edges. But let's be honest, you might want to do that. You might. We just suggest you don't because it'll look crap. All right, so here we go. I'll give you a rough guide okay. on how to do this, right? I'm excited. So you'll find that it then hangs over. So bring it over till one point lines up with the edge of the table. Yep. Then you can take a ruler. Now, if you have a wee bit sticking out, it makes it easier to cut it. Yep. All right, just do that. Swizz through. Take it over, slice it off, and you'll get... How to use a ruler, courtesy of On Tabletop. Aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> no, but you'll get this, right? Yes, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, uh, uh. So you get that edge, uh -huh. right? Now you're going to match that up with something else. Yep. So come on over here. Now what you do is you take the you take this spit, and this actually sits on top. Like okay? that, yep. And then you know that joins to that, so you use that to draw your line, okay? Good golly! Great! <laughs> As we've done here, so the rest are yeah. all done. I shall go and cut this. Yes. And you shall show them the rest of your pencil action. All right. right? Okay. I'm actually going to use some of the some of these Gale Force Nine roads as a wee bit of a, a guide here because we like them a lot. Yes. So we we think they're a perfect way to replicate the road sort of things the size we want because if we make these right, we should be quite interchangeable. We, if they... we should have compatibility, which is some of the things. Like if you're going to make stuff. Make it compatible with the cool stuff. So, okay. So, uh, what you do here is you, we're obviously not going to make a road this thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put this on at an angle even more, and then we can do. I'll ah, just draw it. Do you see? So I'm going to put that over. Make sure it comes right over to the edge. Do that. Do that. Then I'm going to take this curved bit. Oh, hold on. I'm going to get an important thing, which has all been packed away. Can someone bring me back some weights? We've got things of sprays. Can extend this out a bit further. We're all getting tidied up here after a day of doing this. Right, so that goes that way. And then what you can do is you can come back and add in, say there. Yep, that looks kind of cool. I'm going to add in a curve. So it's coming around there. I'm going to take that again. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to curve that way. Okay. All right. Warren's just waiting this stuff. So if you're wondering what all the noise is, it's putting weights on all the bits. So when you're trying to do this, it doesn't just move around all over the place. So you can see we've got a straight edge coming in and just a little bit of curve just for just for a little bit of fun. A little okay. bit of fun. Then there's another road coming off over here, so let's do, let's say that road's going like that. Okay, so let's draw that in like that. Okay, I'll come round. We'll move this out of the way. Put that on that there. Bring that out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring this one pretty straight, because I want to make sure that we've got a straight edge for a lot of houses and things. Sit along there, and then maybe for interest, we'll then curve it. So I'm going to see the way that gets to there. I want to bring it over a bit, so we've got a bit to cut off. This looks good. Bring that in. Job done. So now that road comes up like that. 
curves in here. Now, I'm just going to freehand. You know, I might come back over this. So that actually curves around like that. It doesn't just hit a, a sharp T-junction. Isn't that what you want, Warren? Yes, exactly what I want. So if you can just hold that and then I'll just rub out mm -hmm. any excess lineage there. And then the same thing here. I might sort of just bring that back. If need be, I can just come back over here, but that's looking, yeah. that's looking kind of nice. So that's aiming roughly that direction. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get another road over here. So that one comes in sort of that angle there. Yep. So let's draw it, say, halfway around that. Yeah. Like that. It's nice to have the, the more organic shapes. Um, and with, the build, with us making our own kind of roads and making them from longer pieces, it means we can do some shapes that you wouldn't normally find with uh, templated roads where you only have straights and exact curves to play with. Okay, so we had that half a curve, so it didn't mm -hmm. curve all the way around. I've done a straight and I'm just going to bring it over like that. So we've got a, a straight and then a curve into there. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we can just sort of freehand. Maybe that, maybe that's going to come back a bit. Yeah. And come out there. And go around that way. Do you want mm -hmm. to try and include any more of that? Because that's a more natural sweep there. Yeah. Or do you think it should come out and sort of sweep around like that? I'm happy to give over to your preference. Well, I'll tell you what. We will keep doing this mm -hmm. and then we'll come back and we'll show you what we came up with. All right, so we went ahead and cut all the bits out and this is what we came up with. It's much nicer now. Now it doesn't look all square. You know, sometimes it can be hard to imagine what you're looking at when it's all square, but you know, we've got all the nice curves coming in, moving around. That's the thing if you're making a, a, a layout that's pretty much just like bang, that's the way it's going to be. You can be far more elaborate with your shapes so you get more organic flow to your villages and things. Obviously, if you're doing a modular set, you can't really do that because you're trying to make it all fit and match. But yeah, the, you see me tracing this bit out, and that's how it turned out. And it just slots on like that. And then you see me draw some lines, so that all matches up nicely, and, and this bit as well. Okay, but just to give you some tips on how to do that, right? You need to be very careful when you're doing that. You need a sharp knife, and we've got one heck of a pair of scissors here, all right? Any young viewers, you need to get an adult to come and help you with this if you're going to do anything like this at home. Okay, so we have a church here as well. Uh, we're thinking of adding a few of those. Oh, as I make a mess of the place. To the, to the layouts. So, because we've already done the roads, for example, right, and they're a bit wiggly. One of the downsides is, if you do wiggly roads, it's very hard to then get a connecting road with a good connection, as I've laid it down where it's perfectly connected. But you get the point. Let me find somewhere else. Hold on. Over here. All right, so if you're trying to join that, see the way you're doing that. Now you could sit tracing that and stuff, but it's just a pain, all right? So for some of these things like churches and stuff, for example, here's a railroad um, station over here, and we've decided, you know what, we'll just make a train yardy type thing here and just have another road that comes in and not worry about trying to connect it to the main road system. That way you could just lift it off one table and put it on another. Same thing for the church here. So we're going to use one of these large tiles, or maybe two, don't really know yet, but we'll say it's one. As the, as the church yard, I guess you would call it. So then we'll make another road that comes in from the edge and the church sits there, let's say it's like that. So you've got like a bit to the front, maybe some graves and things back here. But because we've just built it as its own little cell on bit, we can put it on this table or we can put it on that table or put it on a table over there. We can just lift it and put it where we want. But it allows me to show you the cutting technique. So you'll see I've drawn out a few lines You've seen that in the first part. When you come to cut this stuff, sharp knife. Now we get these ones from the likes of, you know, B&Q and stuff, and you can break them off to keep them sharp as you go. But B, don't like, don't try to hurry this. Just do it nice and calmly. You want to come around this side? You might see better. So I've just lined a steel ruler up, right? Pop the blade out, 
and then I'm just scoring it. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm just scoring it. And that way we start to build up a trench, I guess you might call it, that the knife's gonna be in. And then I just keep doing that and apply a little bit more pressure. That way you have a guideline and your knife isn't suddenly gonna pop out and clip you on the fingers. You really don't want that. So I'm just being patient. I'm prepared to go with this a few times. Because this material is actually quite tough to cut through. There you go. Nice straight cut. Okay. Now, you could imagine that that would be very laborious to try and do that the whole way down along this line. All right. And you're tempted to try and force it. And that's the point where maybe you'll slip and you'll cut yourself. So we got these super sharp scissors. Look at these. What are they? Magnuson. Heavy duty scissors. Look at those. My God, but you need to be seriously careful with these because, right, these really do go through the material. That, that would take the tip of your finger off or side of your finger off. So any young viewers, do not be doing this on your own. Get an adult, right? So then you can just take that and then you can go up, right? But before I go anywhere, I'm making damn sure my fingers are nowhere near that blade. Okay. And then you can trace the shape. See, my fingers are well back. Because if that's how quickly it goes through this tough material, you can imagine what that would do to any fingers. Okay. And that's it. Now, any rough bits? You get little bits like that, you can just pick those off and any bits that are a bit, you know, a bit rougher looking, just get some sandpaper, quite a heavy grit and just go like that down the side of it and that'll smooth it all out. Same for the other side. I'll do it real quick, that way we can pop it down into place. Quick check of my fingers again. Now, if you're doing big long bits, it's maybe better then to just try and snip it off like that, rather than trying to struggle a big, like a big long road. If you want to try and keep the material, you can go ahead and try and do a big long one because maybe that'll be useful for putting um, walls or something on as a base. So very quickly, just finish this off. Hey presto, pop it down, pop the churchyard onto it, and there you go. And like I said, that doesn't have to then be connected to the road system, which means I can then take that church and go, actually, that church should be over here on this table. Just find the edge, pop it down. And because you've taken the path off the table, you can imagine that it then joins up or not path, the road that it then joins up with the road system somewhere else around the village or surrounding villages or something. All right, peeps, time to get the roads all finished off. Well, the color anyway. Couple of cobblers. Yes. Couple of cobblers. Right, so if we were gonna do this again from scratch, I'd just go straight to like um Leather brown. Leather spray. Brown. Leather brown spray. Skip all that other crap on episode one. <laughs> just, <laughs> just um, put your wallpaper down to your yeah. tiles, cut them out, and then dust them a leather brown, yeah. job done. Because everything we've done is pretty much getting undone. Yes. Right? But, but it was a case of, oh, it was sunny, and we thought we'd try to use the compressor and stuff, yada, yada, yada. Save a bit of money. Right. But we're we always looking for a way. It's not only about us saving some cash, it's just looking at ways for you to save some cash. But on a large scheme like this, sometimes yes. a couple of air, air cans yes. does the job. Right, so um, last time you've seen the roads, they're all different colors. So the first thing we've had to do is take all the roads, collate them all back together. Um, you can see in front of us here, right? So we've rearranged these roads, um, bringing all the joints. See the joints here? It's very important they're all together. Okay, so the first step we needed to do is we needed to take all the mismatching roads because they didn't match because they've been sprayed at different colors and some yes. were leather brown and stuff. 
So the first thing we did is we got leather brown and we spray it all over them. Dusted. Dusted heavy all over heavy them. dusting, just to, to 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 match the tonality yes. across all of the pieces. Especially around the joints, okay? But yes. we are gonna uh, and that blended them all together so that if you sweat if you looked over it all, it all looked like one piece again rather than mishmash. Mm -hmm. It Here it on tabletop, we like our <laughs> joints to look identical. Yes, it works well if you're going to do one of these permanent layouts and it has a particular, a particular way of going. Yes. Right. And just on that note, you'll see here we've been putting little numbers. There's a one there. You'll find another one underneath there. So this way we got to lift them and put them back together. You know, there's some they match up. It's a joiner, a joining guide. A joining guide. You'll find two, two yes. matches two, and etc. Anyway, after the brown, we then took it and we went over it with the skelly bone. Skelly bone dusting on top of the brown. So if you check this out, this is it. So it's dusted and well, it's quite a heavy dusting of skelly bone because what we've decided to do is we've decided to use soft tone, the army painter soft tone dip. Yes. Now, do you want to show them the tests? Yeah, so we've done some tests with the dip. Uh, we'll do this one first, right? So here was dip. With strong tone. That's a strong tone dip, and that was pretty much on the, the very brown looking roots. Yes. And we liked the way that it ran into the cracks and stuff. It gave us the it, it gave us the, the nice dark filling in around mm -hmm. the cobbles rather than over the top. And that's kind of what we're going for. We could mess around with them, um, you know, clear and all that sort yeah. of stuff, make our own wash, but dip. you know, when you've got a few tins of dip sitting around. It was a no-brainer, plus it's going to give it a very durable surface. It's going to be really, really good. Right? We didn't I hit that with a hair dryer and started to dry them off and then did a little sprinkling of sand just to see, but I wouldn't advise it. Yeah, we can talk about that in a sec. Mm. But we're looking at thinking, right, well, we want it to be brighter. Yes. So I did a... Because a if you're going to let the dip do the work of the shading, you want your initial base color to be lighter. So I sprayed up another test piece. And this, see on these edges here, over here? That's the color we're going for, very scaly bone. It's a bit lighter over here, but you know, that's, that was the sort of brightness mm -hmm. we needed to get to. So when we put a wash on, it, it didn't take it down as dark as that, okay? Yeah. So this was soft tone, mm -hmm. and this was strong tone, and we left them overnight to see which one we'd like the best. Yeah, we didn't like how the sand, we put the sand down on them um, very early while they were still very wet, yeah. and the sand just goes we were trying to We were trying to skip a step. So, but ignore the, that one. The sand and gravel just soaks up the colour. Have a look at that one. Here we go again. A, a strong skelly bone sort of colour mm -hmm. under it. Soft tone on this side, Yeah. strong tone on that side. And there's and not we, a lot we, in it. And we liked it because this is, hold on, let me turn it this way. Mm -hmm. These are the buildings we're kind of trying to match it to. Yeah. So you're thinking, Warren, same quarry, same stone, same shape. Yes. Day. Similar. 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 So I think we're going to go, we, we went with the soft tone. So. Okay. Now, nice. this is soft tone. Let me tell you something about soft tone. Whenever you, because he pulled me up on this, <laughs> whenever you pick up a can of quick shade, do not shake it. I was running around here like I had a pair of maracas shaking away and Lloyd said, don't do that, idiot boy. That is not how you handle quick shade. Quick shade has to be stirred, not shaken. Yes. The army painter guys showed me that when they were over. They're yes. Like, no, no, Lloyd. You have so to sort of get yourself a couple of coffee sticks and go in and just stir it up like a nice thick coffee. What you'll find Ooh. is if you, you'll find little bits of lumps in it, yeah. you, and you just what you do is bring the lumps out and just tap them on the edge, break them up. And then get in and stir it up until it's nice and thick and It's beautiful. perfectly normal if you've just got a, sh a, a tin, it's your first time you've ever opened it and popped it open. It's all runny on the top and then a, almost like a licorice type thing at the bottom. Yeah. You just gradually stir it around and draw it up and draw it up. It's like a big snotter, you want, really. Yeah, you want to avoid getting <laughs> bubbles and stuff into it though yes. because I think that'll affect it when it's going down. Yeah, you want it, you want it nice and non-bubbly. Stirring is the way to go. Yes. Right. right. We're at the stage where we could put some of that down. Now, what we've discovered while we're doing this is at this point, after the spray's been done, if you put in a little bit of separation between the bits, it means when you brush it on, the, the quick shade doesn't pull, right? Because if we kept yeah. it that way, the quick shade would pull on that edge. Yes. See that slightly raised, you get a raised Yeah, you don't want pull that. there. So we're actually gonna pull the bits apart. We're just giving them a bit of separation. Okay, you've stirred this. Yep, all in stirred, with, ready to go. In with quite a large brush. Oh yes. And just pop it down. Don't be too, don't be too worried about being overly generous because you can brush it. This is very forgiving stuff. You can go oh, in and, it's great. and brush it off. Whereas the other stuff that we're trying to make ourselves, every little brush stroke was coming through. This one yeah. has a, a nice, 
medium to it, I guess, where it just yeah. sort of spreads out and settles down nicely. Mm -hmm. Hit that edge there. Okay. Well, you know, dip has now been used for close on maybe fifteen years. Yeah. So it's um, it's right. it's well renowned for being very forgiving stuff. Right, so what you do is you do the entire road right up to there, mm -hmm. and then at the end you would like to do one stroke yeah, all the way up. No, it's kind of optional. You don't need to do that, but we do it just in case, because we don't want to have to do it again. Just in case. No, just to show you that, actually, if this was here and I'm going like this, see the way that pulls? That's an extreme case, but you see the way that pulls? Whereas like that, you get a nice edge on both Yeah. with no pulling either side. And they'll match. Okay. Have to care for your brush. White spirit, in? white spirits. Because this kills brushes. Yes. Okay, so we have done a lot, so we could just move around. Let's do a tour. Let's go over here. Here's one that we've done. Don't touch any of it, because this will take nearly, what, 24 hours to dry nearly? It's, Something like that? It'll be dry in six hours, I think, and then it'll be completely cured in about 24 hours. And it will, it'll cure shiny. Mm -hmm. This will be ultimately shiny when it's, when which it's is, dried. Let, which well, left me to ask, did you hit this I, with a matte spray? Yes, I hit ah. these with a matte spray. So look, it's going to be all, it's not going to be too far off that, it'll be shiny. And then you hit it with a matte spray and you get that. The reason I hit it with a matte spray this morning morning is because we were trying to do color choice. Yes. And it was really difficult to do it when because it was shiny. Because it was so shiny, yeah. So now if you want to do wet cobbles, job done. That's that. Here, I'll have a quick look around the room. Mm -hmm. So you can see it all laid out. That's one, that's another one, that's a big one. That's the one that you've seen us working on earlier in this vlog. Mm -hmm. See that bit of tissue, Justin? Can you take that off in case that wicks up any of the any of the quick shade? Right, so get a good look at that. That's how that's turned out. Um, this pretty much wraps us up on what we're doing Road today. Ones, yeah. Well, we'll still have, we'll still flocking and stuff to do, but we, we can't really do anything else. We just have to just finish that and let it all dry. So. We will see you in the next part.